your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA, it's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast, where we discuss the latest and greatest news in the world of sports. As always, I'm Alex. I'm Ben. And thank you for joining us today. We have a wonderful show ahead of us. We are talking about a couple NFL contract extensions, a um, couple of defensive players, probably the best defensive players on their respective teams. Both from the NFC West, too. Both from the NFC West. Boom. We're going to be talking about uh, Nike and what they are doing in the world of golf as of... This week it was announced? As of really recently, I'm looking at this article, and it was released yesterday. Okay. And then we're going to be doing our amazing and wonderful What's Trending. So we're going to start the show, but before that, uh, I'm going to do something that Ben introduced on our last episode. And from now on, we every show... We need to know your fun fact of the day. Every show I will have a fun fact of the day. Today's fun fact is sports-related, which is not going to be a common thing. If it's fun to me, it's something I already know. The one I said last episode was something I currently already know. Like, say, the SOS, the Titanic is the first ship to ever use the SOS. That's like not the, the fun SOS fact. SOS pad or, or like the like help, help. B- thing? Okay. Yeah. Yes, but that's not the fun fact of the so day. They started that's not that? fun at all. Um, it was started, but they're the first to document, like, it documented use of it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse Interesting. Me. Right. So, so, I mean, I have some stored, but I looked for a good one today in the world of sports. So, today, my fun fact for you listeners and for you, Ben. Is if Michael Phelps was a country, he would rank number 35 on the all-time Olympic gold medal list ahead of 97 other nations. Jesus. That's, that just proves to show you that he's the most prolific Olympian ever. Yeah, and he came back out of retirement for this Olympics, and you know what? It came out today that he is not ruling out 2020. Come on, man. Just, well, obviously, I think it will depend on how he does in these Olympics, a lot yes. of it. Do you think he can get at least two more gold medals? Oh, yeah. I mean, like I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't imagine the, that he has had any drop. Because if he gets two more gold medals, he'll have the. I think he'll have the most, <gasps> the most Excuse gold me. medals at fourteen, in a career. I think he already has that record. I, th- I don't think so. I think some gymnast has more golds over time. We'll have to look that up, but I think, I think so. Okay. Well, hey, before we get started in our show, you know the sentence: "The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog." Okay. You know that contains every letter of the alphabet. Two facts for you today. Boom. You looked that up. You don't no, know. No, I know that one. Really? That's one I know, yeah. The quick uh, yeah, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog has every letter of the alphabet in it. Well, there you go. That's how you can learn your alphabets right there. Just say that phrase all Just over from, and over and yeah. over. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I'm always like, there's no Z. It'll make all lazy. Dang it. There yeah. There you go. Yeah, lazy. Yeah, I know. I, I remind myself. And there's a Y there, too. And there's a V. They're all over the place, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah, I was talking about in lazy, but... I, there's a Z and a Y. That's what I said. Well, I'm yeah. saying <laughs> just letters that I always sit there and go, there's not that in there. And then I go through and I'm like, wait. Oh, like you, did you is. have to like write it out to visualize it? No, I read it sometimes, though. Like I'll look it up. Okay, but anyways... <laughs> Fun fact. I just let you have that extra Fun one. fact of the show. A little extra one. We've got two of them. So mm-hmm. we're jumping in now. Do you want to go with the Niners player contract first or the Cardinals player contract first? How about I do the Niners player and you do the the Cardinals player? Hey, there you go. That works. Go ahead. Even though I'm not a Niner fan, I'm still very familiar with their team. And he's probably my favorite player on the team, obviously, because they're dumb and let Alex Smith walk. <clears throat> they me. traded him. They didn't let him walk. <clears throat> they forced him out. Navarro Bowman, middle linebacker of the San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers, has agreed to a four-year contract extension with the Niners. Uh, that is something that is pretty good for them. He is the, probably the main focal point of their defense. It's a four-year extension worth $44 million, including $20 million guaranteed. Uh, that, that pretty much takes him through the 2022 season as their centerpiece on defense as long as he stays healthy, and he's there throughout the Life of his contract. He wasn't at full strength in 2015. Obviously, he didn't come back fully. 
He still led the NFL in tackles, 154, and then he had two and a half sacks and a forced fumble. So Yeah, coming off that horrific knee injury in the NFC Championship game against the Seahawks. Mm, so he didn't was, play and then oof. the season after. And then last season he came back and he really didn't miss a beat. Like you mentioned, you saw you read his stats, 154 tackles. I'm surprised he came back so strong because coming off that knee injury, I thought he wouldn't have the same Excuse effect me. as well as with Patrick Willis not there. Oh, yeah. So I'm surprised he had that same effect coming off that injury and a lot of the losses the Niners had on that defense, a lot of people retiring. So let's go for Patrick Willis. I'm surprised they extended him for so long because now he's currently on a seven-year deal yeah. through the 2022 season. That's a really, really long time in the NFL. So yeah, he, he's still somewhat young. He's only 28 years old. Yeah. So he's still seven years. I'd put him at 35. So, but that's a really long time. I'm surprised they extended him that long. You don't yeah. always see people. I don't. I can't. So last time I saw a seven-year contract. Well, in 2012, the Niners signed Bowman to an extension that sent him through 2018. So it added on top of that, and he had three years left of that. So, hey, man. Yeah, I'd say it's. I'd say it's very well deserving, but I was yeah. just surprised the length of it. I thought that was a little. <laughs> That's like a hockey contract, right there. Yeah, almost because hockey contracts you can really avoid them out anytime you want, but they they sign them for like massive, like at least ten years all the time. It seems like so. Mm-hmm. I was surprised at the length of it, but it's a good for Bowman. It's a good move for the Niners. He's one of the best middle linebackers in the game. Really solid. So, kudos and congrats for Navarro Bowman. All hopefully, right. he can stay healthy. Yeah, hopefully, I like him a lot. All right, moving on to fellow AFC, um, NFC. Sorry, NFC West team, the Cardinals. Yeah, the Arizona Cardinals have a contract extension for safety Tyron Matthew. He becomes he's one of the most versatile defenders in the NFL. He's got a five year, sixty two and a half million dollar extension. He's going to be averaging about twelve million dollars a year. But here's the big one, Alex. He's got okay. forty million dollars in guaranteed money of that sixty two. So quite a heavy. Quite a heavy range there in the guaranteed, so 40 out of 62. Coming off of his second ACL injury last season, he was forced to miss. Really, at the end of the end of the season, he got an ACL tear. So he's got two of them now, and in only a few years he's been in the NFL. Are you surprised at the extension? Yes and no. Um, it is tricky because of, yes, the injuries, but they see how you know important he is to them while he's on the field, and he has really done well coming back from the first injury, let alone how he's going to come back from the second injury. So I think it was just bound to happen. He, he's one of those guys that's been, he's going to get, he got rewarded because of what he's done for the team and being absolutely great for the team since he came over, you know, no problems off the field, on the field really at all other than these injuries. Um, I think he's deserving of it for sure. If you look at it that way. Yeah. Tyron Matthew, he becomes the highest paid safety, but I think a lot of that is because of his versatility He's not just a safety. He can play cornerback. He'll occasionally come into the box. It's kind of like, reminds me of uh, Troy Polamalu, Alex, who you're familiar with. Kind of like an outside linebacker. In yeah, terms. He, he has. he's not as quick as Ed Reed, but he reminds me of Polamalu and Ed Reed in the same sense um, of what they do coming down the box. Does a lot of the same stuff as um, teammate Dion B- Dayon Buchanan, Dion Buchanan. Uh, out of Washington State. Does some, a lot of the similar stuff. Um, Drafted as a safety, but he comes down in the box, plays linebacker. Um, really versatile in that aspect. He plays safety. He can come down and play the nickelback, cornerback style, you know, style DB. Um, so it's really awesome as a player to see that. Like, I, I would love the Steelers to have drafted him. I'm sure the, you would love the Packers to have drafted him in terms of what he can do, even though the Packers have a pretty good safety over there in uh, Clinton Dix. I do love Clinton Dix. I, I like him so. a lot too. Yeah, he's, he's, a, good, he's a good player. Um, but I, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's uh, – He's definitely versatile, and it, and you you know you want guys like that on your defense. You have him, and you have Patrick Peterson and Bethel, um, young corners and a secondary that's you know one of the better secondaries in the league because of its depth. You know, and when yeah. you have you have two of the best at their respective positions, whether or not you think Patrick Peterson is the best corner in the league or whatever debate, he's definitely you one of the top. Have. I'd say top three or four. Mm-hmm, for exactly. Sure. Um, then he's you know obviously very good, and then you have you know Tyron who can no offense to Ed. I'm sorry, Henry. No offense to Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas typically stays in the safety spot. I, I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm saying um, when you have somebody like um, Tyron who can do that and then come play nickel and then play in the slot and, and then play safety and come down and play that roaming linebacker spot, um, the versatility there too um, is just, you know, you, you you reward that kind of thing, you know. So I'm not surprised they get a deal done. Um, it was something that came out earlier this, this off season. So, I mean, I'm happy to see it happen. Yeah, I was surprised that he did get the deal because he has only been in the NFL three years now, and he does uh, he has already torn two ACLs. He tore his first one his rookie year, like midway through the season, 
And then following his second year, he didn't really do too well. Maybe he still had some lingering effects from that. And then last year was really his breakout year. Yeah, he had a great year last year. He had a year. great year until he tore his ACL again in 2000. I'm sorry, in December. So he came out at LSU. He had the off the field issues, but he was a standout performer at LSU. The Cardinals drafted him, I believe, the third round when he came out, and I thought it was a steal automatically. So the Cardinals, and then they drafted Robert Kemdichi from Ole Miss this year, so he has more off the field issues. So they obviously have the history. They turned Matthew into a great player, and they they've got his. You know, they got him out of trouble, so hopefully they can do the same thing with Kim Dichi with their first round pick this year. But I thought I was surprised because he's he's only been in the league three years and he's already torn two ACLs. It's hard to even come back from one and be successful, let alone two. So mm-hmm. we'll have to wait and see how he how he can come back from that. He is reportedly gonna be cleared to practice in about a couple of weeks, so maybe he'll be ready for the start of this season. I'm sure they'll take it easy with him. I wouldn't expect him to play maybe not at all in the preseason, get him ready for the regular season, maybe miss a few games at the most but hopefully the honey badger can can sort of get healthy stay on the field for arizona he's a great player when he's healthy and when he's out there so big part of the cardinals defense i agree with you man okay well hey we're gonna move on to our first break and then we're gonna come back from break and talk about some golf news so do not go anywhere guys we'll be right back here at the golden state media concepts sports podcast Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Before we jump into golf, Alex, we have some baseball games going on. Quite a few. We have five games All currently right, Let's swing in it. progress. So in the bottom of the fourth, the Cleveland Indians have a 4-1 lead over the Minnesota Twins. The Kansas City Royals have a 2-0 lead over the Tampa Bay Rays at the end of the fifth inning. The Cincinnati Reds have a 2-0 lead over the Cardinals in the top of the fourth inning. Just getting underway, the Giants and the Phillies are tied at one in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, I, I was as, waiting for that game to start, and I look, and it's already 1-1. What the heck, man? Yeah, and as well as the Tigers and the White Sox are in the bottom of the first at 1-1. The Giants not doing so well coming out of the break, and they're still struggling. Only a two-game lead man. over the Dodgers in the NL West. You don't got to tell me. I know. Coming from you, who is a Giants fan, of course you know. But Oh, man. And then still going on in progress in the Olympic men's soccer game, we have Iraq versus Denmark. We are still tied up at nil-nil in the 76th minute. So. Mm-hmm. And then coming here in just about 25 minutes, we have Honduras and Algeria getting kicked off. Yeah, Brazil and South Africa later, and then Mexico and Germany, Alex. A game I'm sure Ooh. you'll be looking at. I'll take a glance. Fan of the German side. Yeah, I got some stuff I got to do today. There's a movie coming out I'm watching. I'm going to – you ever been to Lucille's? No. Barbecue in Roosevelt near Sunsplash? No. It's a, it's a water park where, around here. Where I know what Sunsplash is. But... Well, I was... Oh, okay. Maybe they don't. Um, and, um, yeah, it's, it's a really good barbecue place. You should go sometime. It's called Lucille's Barbecue. Okay. It's, um, Ben, it's... You want a fun fact about Lucille? That's Lucille the name Ball? of the... That's the name of the San Francisco Giants mascot, yeah. Lucille. I used to think, I was like, why is it a girl? And it's not. His name is Lou, L-O-U, like seal. the seal, like yeah. Lucille. I love it. Yeah. Okay, well, moving on to golf, as you and I have debated and talked about before the show even started, Nike is exiting golf club the golf club business to focus on footwear and apparel. So they're not yeah. going to be making golf clubs anymore. Um, before you get started, I know you have a lot to say on this matter. Um, for those who aren't f- aware that probably the two most notable golfers to be Nike uh, represented would be Tiger Woods and then Rory McIlroy, the world's number four, not to mention 14 new players signed this year as well. And then two big hitting stars, you know, the guys that do the long drive stuff, Brooks Kopka and Tony Finau. Great But, uh, I mean, like I used to, like I told you, I used to work at a sporting store and people, 
I think because it was a Nike club, you know, and then a lot of the younger players were getting sponsored by Nike. You know, it's like everybody thinks because it's Nike, it's the best because, you know, if it's sports and it's Nike, it's great. And I had to tell them otherwise. I'm like, no, these TaylorMades are really good. These Titleists are really good. Callaway is really good. You know, Nike is much better than it used to be because they have the money to do the research when it comes to the clubs and all the science that goes into it. Um, but I mean, at the same time, like I said, the clubs are, are, are good now. They're really good clubs. There's the Vapor Pros that McElroy um, plays with are very good clubs. You know, I've played with them myself, and um, they're very, very solid clubs. The Speed Blades and the the Vapor Pros and the Vapor Speeds, and it's weird to me that they're just going to cut it and stop making clubs. Yeah, I I'm not really sure. They didn't really say exactly why, uh, other than what they just mentioned. They're going to focus their efforts on making clothing and golf shoes. They're going away from clubs, balls, and bags. So really, basically, they have some nice golf bags too. So the basically the equipment you use to actually play golf, that's what Nike is stopping to make. So I am not really sure. <clears throat> this announcement came yesterday. It came as a surprise to all of us, but not Tiger Woods. So Woods was one who knew that this was going to happen. He knew that the announcement was coming, and he's going to have to search for a new club maker. So Woods and his agent want to say, Tiger and I have multiple conversations about what we do, and we have an organized plan in place. So that's what his agent, Mark Steinberg, had to say about it. Mm -hmm. So the plan is continued rest and rehabilitation, and we'll sort out the equipment thing in due course. Obviously, Tiger is trying to come back from the multiple injuries, the back, the knee. So I'll be in the process of doing all effective immediately. So Tiger Woods and Roy McIlroy, they're going to need new someone to provide them with new clubs. But do you think they're going to stay with Nike? Because they're still making the apparel. Mm -hmm. So do you still think they'll stay with Nike and have just different clubs? Or well, they'll see, have a totally different organization yeah, in general? That's interesting because Tony Finau, I hope I'm saying that name right, Finau, F-I-N-A-U. Um, he was one of the ones, like I said, uh, he's the like the long drive guys, the big hitting guys. Um, and he said he got the news late. He said, I just heard in the last hour or so, it's a little bit of a shock to say, I love the equipment I'm playing now. It's a real process to get through to make a change like that. I don't know exactly what it's going to mean for contracts, but it's pretty likely that this time next year, I won't be playing Nike clubs. Right. right. Obviously. So yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I, he says, it, I totally understand it from their perspective. They're killing it in apparel. They're killing it in footwear. It's just a business. Um, yeah, it's interesting to look at if they're going to, you know, say, oh, these tailor-made clubs are really my state. Like, the, I love these clubs, you know, or, um, you know, Callaway with the big Bertha club, so on and so forth. If they move to Callaway, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting how one would go about that, you know, hitting a certain kind of club and then having all your apparel covered by Nike, you know? Yeah, it would be kind of interesting. My thought is if Nike's stopping to make these items, they must be losing money on it. You, yeah, you they would wouldn't think they wouldn't stop making these items if they were making it or if they were making a ton of money. And you mentioned Nike. I'd say Nike is the biggest apparel company. People buy Nike for the brand, for the swoosh. Yep. I would imagine they wouldn't be losing money on this. I guess in in a golf term, you have you have obviously you mentioned the the Taylor Mades, Callaways, like the Titleist, like those specific golf brands more focused on golf itself. As Nike's more of a global organization, doing everything from you know basketball football baseball soccer they're doing everything mm -hmm. so those other golf companies are focused on that one thing so they may have that specific niche nike doesn't have that so that could be a possibility why they're going away from it i'm really not sure so nike's nike's brand president trevor edwards went on to say that we're committed to being the undisputed leader in golf footwear and apparel we will achieve this by investing in performance innovation for athletes and delivering sustainable profitable growth for nike golf so they're still focused on Nike Golf just going away from the clubs. I don't really understand it, though. They they have to be losing money on the deal. Yeah, you would think that they would be. Uh, and that's... that's I mean, that, It's so, surprising if yeah, that is the case. Exactly, yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting to, to look at in that aspect, too, is why why do they... Or, you know, why are they, you know, going back from that? It's... I would like to know. I'd like not, 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 I don't mean I don't need to know, but I mean that'd be interesting to find out, you know, if that's the case because you would think Nike makes so much money that it's hard for them to lose money on something, but you know, exactly. At the end of the day, you, know, you still lose money on, on everything. So, so you you worked at the sporting goods store as you mentioned. So yeah, you're more familiar with the golf aspect uh -huh. and the specific clubs than I am. So if you were to pick one, taking Nike out of the picture, what would you choose? I like Taylor made clubs a lot. Taylor, okay. Yeah, TaylorMade uh, have have really nice clubs. Um, whether you're looking at the uh, the the slider, the SLDR, you have the um, the Speed Pocket, um, a lot of good clubs that they have. 
Um, I'm not super familiar. The Arrow Burner currently, which was a club I liked a lot. Um, I've always liked TaylorMade. You know, growing up, TaylorMade, I thought was like the premier club. You know what I mean? Um, it depends really what I'm looking at. You know, if you're a casual golfer, you can have a, a driver and then have different irons, you know? Yeah, but if you're um, a professional golfer, you have yeah, to you sort go of, by all of them. You have to go with one specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, name. TaylorMade has the M2s right now, which are really popular. Um, the M2 Tours, uh, all of those models are really that's their, that's kind of their premier thing right now. Um, they have the RSIs. Um, their irons are really popular. The Tour Preferred irons, the M8s, uh, and it depends on what you're looking for. Steel shaft, you know, um, graphite. They have the Aero Burner, like I said. Uh, they had the SLDRs from a couple of years ago that were really solid drivers. It, I guess it depends on, you know, the player itself. You know, I know a lot of guys that TaylorMade is very similar to Callaway, so they can go, you know, one for the other. Um, personally, yeah, TaylorMade is, is, I'm more of a fan of TaylorMade. The M2 driver just came out this past year. Uh, the M1 driver, they have a special edition M1 driver that's like 799 bucks. Um, and TaylorMade was one of the first really to also add the sliders in, you know, the weight distributors on their okay. driver heads for, um, you know, weight, weight on the club for sli- for draw, for fade. Um, you know, th- they added all those things. They had the R15 last year that had dual sliders on it. Um, they had an arrow burner from a few years ago that had a, like a, a, a pocket cut into it for the club face. It added um, MOI, which is moment of inertia. It's when the ball hits the... The tee hit, you know, you hit the ball with your with your club, and it's how it reacts in terms of a sweet spot. Um, so okay. things like that, you know. Um, I think me personally, how much I know about them, I would pick TaylorMade, followed probably by Callaway. I would say. Okay, so definitely, there's a lot of options, but yeah, I mean, you, uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're going to be similar prices too. I mean, you have the M2 is roughly, you know, you can get a like a junior driver is four hundred bucks. You know, you can get an R15. Um, driver for two twenty nine right now because the, they're the later model. You know, you can get an error burner for one ninety nine. So it, it depends. You know, there's they. You know, it's typical expensive golf stuff is as Nike was. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. People are gonna have to go with different clubs now. Nike's not gonna be in the business of making golf clubs, golf bags, and golf balls anymore. So mm-hmm. I, would say, I would say so. Man. Big surprise. It is honestly it's a really big surprise. Yeah, it surprised me when you brought that up. Was, you said Nike. I was like, what about Nike? Um, they're talking about, man. Yeah, I went on Google this morning, and that was the very first thing that came into my search. Man. Because on, on your phone, if you just go on Google, it'll bring up, like, trending things. That was the very first thing. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know this. So, very interesting. Very interesting, to say the least. All right, well, we have our last bit of news today, and that is what's trending. But we're going to take our last break before that here. So, we will be right back. Uh, you guys don't go anywhere, and we'll be here at the Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Done. Just stops. I like how I can cut it on, cut it on dime. Okay, so um, we updated you a little bit on baseball again. We'll do so just before we get going because I wanted to mention one thing as well. Um, still 4-2 within Cleveland there over Minnesota. 2 nothing Kansas City over Tampa Bay at home. Cincinnati at home is over uh, is 3 nothing with the lead over to St. Louis. Uh, the White, White Sox are 3 up 1 uh, against Detroit on the road. And then, like you said, we had the tie 1-1 between the Giants and the Phillies in Philly. Uh, it's also um, newly acquired starter Matt Moore's first start with the team. Yes, coming over from the Rays in the Matt Duffy deal that was on Monday. That made me, oh man, I'm so sad. I love Matt Duffy. Um, it's funny. Uh, my, bud, my brother's like, yeah, I like Matt Moore. I was like, yeah, man, I loved when he was with the Panthers. He's pretty, and the Dolphins. He's, he's pretty good with the Dolphins now, so I mean, it's giving him a hard time. But all right, so we're moving on to our, what is it? Our what? what? Our wonderful, famous, amazing, what's trending? Yes. Who should start this one? Um, I will. Go for it. You know who Justin Tucker is? Yes. Baltimore Ravens kicker. Recently yeah. signed a new contract, right? Or did he franchise yeah. tag? No, he recently signed, signed a, yeah. uh, a still fresh 16 four million, years, right? $16.8 million. There you game. go, yeah. Um, some consider him the best kicker at his position. 
in football, obviously. I would say Steven Goskowski of the Patriots, but I would say Gostowski's pretty up there. I would say um Hauschka's up there. I would say Janikowski still got that leg. Um Dan Bailey apparently is the most accurate kicker in NFL history. Um and hey, like I say every year, not every year, as I've said to you this off season, uh, look out for Chris Boswell, man. Steelers kicker came in the last year only made his first three kicks from 50 yards plus. And I'm not saying first kicks from his first three kicks in the NFL were from 50 yards plus. That's good. Missed two kicks all year. Um, long kicks. Like, yeah, I like the guy a lot. So I'm looking forward to having him bright spot in what's been a otherwise somewhat dim off season for me as a Steeler fan with suspensions and injuries and such. But moving on to kickers, like I said, and staying in the AFC North, Justin Tucker has claimed that he could make an 84-yard field goal possible in prime conditions. Now, I don't know what he means in prime conditions, whether or not you have... Like no solid winds unless, or and rain. I think, I think he means a 100-mile-per-hour wind from behind him. Because, are you kidding me, man? In Denver. Uh, yeah, this is a... Right. He says, in ideal conditions, he can hit one from more than 80 yards out. Quote, we think about these things really specifically. If you send me out there, you have a reason for it because I think I can make a kick. To me, it doesn't matter where. I just have to hit a good ball. If conditions are prime, like last season... We opened up to Denver. The weather was warm and the field was nice. You're up in the altitude, so the ball just carries. And in pregame, I hit the crossbar from 85. So if the situation is just prime, maybe 84 and a half yards. Yeah, well, you can project it a little differently, man. I was talking to my brother, and um, he knew, but my mom was wondering why the Buccaneers drafted a kicker in the second round this year, Robert Aguayo out of Florida State. Yeah. And I was like, well, he's a good kicker. He's got a strong leg. I actually saw him a couple years ago in one of their spring practice televised games kick a 70-yard field goal and make it. Now, he wasn't being rushed by anybody, you know. Not as much pressure either. Yeah, in that, and you can project the ball lower because no one's jumping to block it. You know, I mean, if you do that, you're going to kick it into somebody's face because they're all jumping. It's different. You know what I mean? I don't think he would ever I don't think they would ever attempt an 85 yard field goal let alone get close to making an 85 yard field goal you know what I mean yeah no way I don't I don't see it possibly happening there's no way no especially he has in to Denver. kick the ball he has to kick the ball so low it's got to be you know to get more you know more length on it as opposed to the height yeah. it's got to be blocked especially in Denver a lot of times it's colder rather than warmer so you're more so kicking a, a brick ball and you know not as ne- not not necessarily a warmed up ball like uh he's stating here when they played them at whatever point in the year last year. So uh no thanks Justin Tucker, I don't buy it. Moving on to you Ben. Okay, so moving on, we have the ever so popular Pokemon Go, Alex. It's taking over the Olympics. Pokemon Go away. Hashtag Pokemon Go away. Well, in Brazil, it kind of has gone away because it has not been released yet in Brazil. But here's <laughs> here's the caveat, okay? So Japan's <laughs> Olympic. Excuse me. I'm going to butcher this name. So Kohi Uchimura. I, I honestly, believe, you're doing really great with these names today. I believe that's his name. So he's an Olympic gymnast okay. from Japan. He's a fan of Pokemon Go. Okay, big fan of it. He was stunned to receive a phone bill of 500,000 yen which equates to $4,954 here in the United States. It's a mobile bill after running up his data plan after playing the ever-so-popular Pokemon Go game. As I mentioned, what makes this even frustrating is that Pokemon Go has not even been released in Brazil. So his his chance of being successful in catching Pokemon is literally absolute. He can't catch anything. There's nothing there. It hasn't been released yet. So he runs up a $5,000 phone bill playing Pokemon Go when he can't do anything. (laughs) <laughs> One of his teammates, Kenzo Shirai, Shirai, said he looked dead at the team meal that day. Well, I would imagine so having to pay a $5,000 phone bill for something that he can't do anything with. <laughs> Thankfully for for Kohi Ichimura, his Japanese carrier service agreed to reduce his bill to only $30, so about 3,000 yen because of this. So I would be very upset. So like this is so like he can only he can only charge thirty dollars a day because of this now. So they because the mobile data obviously going international. So they obviously decided to look at it and he was quoted by saying, I really lucked out, you know. That's all he really had to say. I really lucked out. I really lucked out. I yeah. wouldn't quite put it that way, but okay, whatever you say, man. Whatever you say. Yeah. All right, moving on to my second bit, and that is something I mentioned last week in the What's Trending 
section of our show. And that was cornerback, first round pick of the Bengals, William Jackson the third. Um, an update on that is what's trending currently. That's why I'm saying it. He's going to have surgery to reattach his torn pectoral muscle. The Bengals do believe, though, he could come back from this um, from it this season, depending on his rehab. Um, when this was first announced, which was on Tuesday, um, I announced it, and that same day, Jackson did not want to talk to reporters about about it at all. But since this news, he has a little bit more in his step, a little bit more bounce in his step currently. Uh, considering that that bit of news could be a plus for him that he could make it back this year, so that's good news for him. Hopefully, he can sort of re rehabilitate and recap yeah. his injury faster than later. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's just that, I feel like that's such a deflating thing for somebody who's finally in the NFL, especially first round pick. You know who? Yeah, hasn't are even expected taken the field to, exactly. Yet. I mean, any draft pick, I would say it's probably just as as dramatic for any draft pick. But you know, it might be a little less dramatic for maybe somebody in the first round who's guaranteed a spot. You know, if that happened to somebody in the fifth or sixth round. You know, undrafted guy that tore it, you know, you're looking at possibly not being employed anymore. But, you know, it, it's nice to at least have that bit of optimism, I suppose. Yeah, definitely a good thing. All right, your second. Yes, moving on. We have Elena Deladon, reigning WNBA, WNBA MVP from the Chicago Sky. Solid. Yeah, very She's good great. player. She's out of Delaware. She's really young, too, only <gasps> been in the league, I believe, Excuse three, me. four years. She's yeah, also part of the women's national team women's national basketball team in rio they're looking to What's her first name again elena deladon is her name so elena is her first name so they're looking to win their sixth straight gold medal the united states women's national 26 team. yeah so she's only 26 years old so she recently has come out openly gay and is actually engaged That's to awesome. to her former girlfriend now her fiance amanda clifton yeah. so it's the first time that she had actually come out and we have known of her public orientation a lot of women's uh, basketball players have come out before. Brittany Griner's come out. Uh, I believe Cheryl Swoops, former WNBA legend as well. So she's actually engaged. Is Della Don. I called her Cheryl Hoops Swoops. Yeah, great. She was of the Houston <laughs> Comets. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, she came out and said it was it was easy for me who because I've I've known this my whole for my whole life. My teammates have known about it for a while now. I've got nothing to hide. So it's great for Della Don, and hopefully her. Her marriage goes well. Yeah, that's so. awesome to hear. You know, it's always nice when somebody can come out and do that. So yeah, absolutely. I don't mean, I, don't mean, you know, I mean, not come out. You know, it's it's always nice. It's always nice that somebody is you know can come and do that. That's great to hear. Yes. All definitely. right. Moving on to my last bit of trending news, and then I'll say one more too. Yeah, we each got three. So home plate umpire ejects fan from Giants Phillies game. This a couple of days ago, uh, from the first game of the Phillies Giants series, which was Tuesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. My allergies made a killing me today. So, uh, I you don't see it very often. You know, I don't. I don't remember the last time I've seen it ever. I can't remember. I've seen. I know I've seen it before, but anyone other than a time. player or a manager. Yeah, I so. know I've seen it. Just can't recall. But during yes Tuesday game Tuesday night's game between the San Francisco, San Francisco Giants and the Philadelphia Phillies at home for the Phillies, there was apparently a Phillies fan. It was Bob Davidson, was the umpire who gave him a little too much of the business. Yeah, reports are that he had some alcohol involved as well. So Yeah, yeah. He was clearly inebriated when you watched him walk off. I was watching it happen. Um, it was it was crazy, honestly, to see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, he tossed him for what is language. Um, I'm not going to get into what he said here. If you guys want to look it up, by all means, look it up. Um, he it wasn't very nice. You know, he's heckling him and yelled some stuff at him that he wasn't too fond of. So he, he threw him out. He threw him out. He threw him right out of the game. Uh, he said... Um, you know, I don't want to hear any of that, you know, anything like that. Uh, what's the word I said? There it is. He goes, I didn't know why the security just didn't go get them on their own. There was kids there and young girls there. Um, you know, people cheered him for doing it. You know, yeah, definitely like a that. good thing. You don't want to see, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm cheer David for throwing them out. I'm, I'm paying my money to watch a game and not have anyone distract me and distract yeah. the flow of everything. So it's a good thing that he did that. Get get that guy out of there. Yeah, you don't need that kind of stuff. I mean, you you can get it every once in a while, like little stuff, like oh, you're just having fun. But he, then he started kind of going at him more, and then yeah, you don't want you don't want to hear that stuff. No, not at all. So, so it's I'm, a good, I'm glad definitely a good out. thing. So people forget they have that ability. I mean, people forget they have that uh, power. Throw them out of there, man. Get them out of there. Yeah. Get him out. All you're right. out of here. Yeah, you're out of here. He's like, you're out of here. This whole stadium's out of here. I so, wouldn't go that far, but. I was, I was doing a little, you know, you're out of order. You're out of order. Okay. I was, I was making my own, though. Yeah, well. <clears throat> All right, well, let's give us your final. Anyways, yeah, let's give so us So my your, final bit. You never like it. My final yeah. bit of what's trending, Alex, is something you're going to be interested <clears throat> in and something you're probably going to like to hear. Is this right? Because I'm going to go soccer here. 
you know I have to go soccer here. Okay. okay. So, long time rumored, Man United target the Frenchman midfielder Paul Pogba. Yeah. It's been rumored to go to Man United all summer long. Really, we're at the point where we're just waiting for to hear the announcement. He's been on holiday in the United States. He spent some time in L.A., New York, Miami. So, really, as soon as reports are, as soon as he comes back to Europe, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, he currently plays for Juventus, which is the Italian champion side. And he's looking at going back to Manchester United in a record deal. About 120 million euros, maybe even more. So, a record deal. Literally the highest transfer ever. Paul Pogba for Juventus wore number 10. Yes. So... At the can't Adidas. wear that at Manchester United, unfortunately, because no, it's Wayne Rooney. occupied. But anyways, at the, at the Adidas store in France, Adidas makes both Juventus and Man United kits. They are the maker of the kits. Like mm-hmm. Nike makes some kits. Uh, Puma makes kits like Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund. Why they call them kits. New Balance. Mm-hmm. But anyways, they make their jerseys, okay? <clears throat> yes. So at the official Adidas store in Paris, they have... Juventus number 10 jerseys, not with Paul Pogba's name on them, hmm. with Paolo Dybala's name on them. Hmm. He wore number 21 last year for Juve. They do have Gonzalo Higuain number 9 kits, Gonzalo Higuain coming over just about a week ago from Napoli, but they don't have Paul Pogba number 10 kit. so why would they not have that? Interesting to say the Maybe least, because then. he's going to Manchester United. That might be the biggest hint that this deal is confirmed. Yeah. I've always wondered, like I said, I've always wondered why they're called kits. I don't like that. Well, because it's the shorts and the sounds, socks. And it sounds funny to me. It's uniforms, jerseys, whatever. I don't, know. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's just something they do in soccer. But anyway, Maybe. so <clears throat> Paul Pogba number 10 jerseys are not at the Odita store. They're Paolo Dybala number 10 jerseys. You guys can't see me, but I'm doing the finger, like the slow, like the tick, 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 tick. My fingers like, yeah, but hmm. you're pretty much just waiting for the announcement. Reports are it could happen as early as today. Um, hey, I you know, man, you agreed to pay the fee. It's just all about time. when it's going to happen. Pretty much. And we'll always have to break that down on the sports podcast and more and in depth show. on the Golden State Media Concept Soccer Podcast. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because we're all done here. So how about we mention some more of our shows? We have wonderful shows. We have football. We have sports, obviously. We have the soccer show. We do movies and entertainment and weird news, television. And baseball. <clears throat> ben has a tele- uh, yeah baseball show he's doing later today. So it's uh, honestly great if you have uh, the heckling for anything that you want to listen to. Um, as always, you can find us at gsmcpodcast.com where all those shows are available as well as on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play where you can find those as well. Not to mention YouTube has our shows on them. You can go to LinkedIn. We have a page on LinkedIn. We have a page on Instagram and Twitter at gsmc underscore sports, not to mention underscore football, underscore soccer, underscore baseball for all the shows that Ben and myself do either with each other or separately with other hosts as a matter of fact ben and i only have one other host my football host is his baseball co-host jeremiah boom you never know what you don't know so we are going to go ahead and get out of here today ben do you have anything you want to say to the lovely fans before we get moving yes i do i want to say thank you for listening all the episodes we appreciate it if you're on itunes make sure you leave us a rating leave us a review if you're on youtube give us a like give us a comment facebook give us a like twitter give us a favorite and a follow a retweet everything just try and any way you can spread the show that would be much appreciated and we thank you for listening yeah thank you for listening as always i'm alex i'm ben and we will see you guys next week yes sir goodbye peace everybody